So welcome back again. We are starting our second session, which is the Q&A session with Ms. Julia uh, Clark. She has given us tremendous information, a lot of gold. So I want to encourage you to go back to the first recording. That's going to be in our timeline. Um, there you can listen in to our story. Some of the gold she laid as a former athlete. I think uh, many there I am. has got okay. a wealth of information. Yes, you are back. Do you see how Instagram is play with me? Like literally, <laughs> when you're gonna do it, Instagram is like session over, start over. Um, Cause they know. <laughs> but it, it is an hour timer. That's how I know we had a good show because we used the whole yeah. hour. Wow. It's a Thirty minute show. So um, I think that's great. That's two parts. So you're gonna have two podcasts on Ten Year Senior Channel. Go cool girl, go Jabato. So um, the first question we had was I'll leave it anonymous, but they asked to hear maybe your best memory or your best story from when you were a student athlete traveling? Can you, can you remember any? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a lot, right? So my best memory, I'll, I, <laughs> I always remember, so I, be, I believe it was my, my third year. And what took place was that I hurt my ankle the, the same week that we were supposed to travel. And we, I was doing crossovers in, I was doing crossovers in the, in practice. And I actually fell and I hurt my ankle really badly. Like I, I felt like I barely could have walked. So I went in and I said, coach, I don't think I'm going to be able to try. You know, he always was in coaching when he was really riled up with, you know, with shouting, shouting in a very, nice aggressive way to make sure I, I remember what I have to do outside outside of the field he was very poised he said well you know let's see how it goes you know uh, let's try to work on it to see if it's possible then I told because I told him I said I don't think I'd be able to make it on that trip this is this is one of my honest honestly this is one of my greatest memories and so I I had practice I messed up my ankle then I spoke to coach Cooper and then somehow coach Cooper was just like Oh, Miss Roll wants to speak to you. Every I and it wasn't an and it wasn't like a welcoming where I would just go into her office because she always has a very great open door policy. But this time it was just like, oh, she's looking for you, so you need to go in there. So I so I went into her office and she said, I heard you you don't plan to travel on the weekend. So she said, so I said, yeah, I I hurt my ankle. So she says, oh, so. So what's going to happen is that this is a meet that you competed at last year. You did well. You, you made the medal stands. So you're still going to go, even though you messed up your ankle and you're still going to compete. And that's it. And so she said it just like that. So I'm like, between my pain and my, my mindset, I was just like, I guess I got to go. But the reason why it was so memorable for me is that this was at Emory Riddle. And if anybody knows that when you do either shot put or discus events, yes, you can stand and throw, but for a further distance, you can also glide for the shot put. That means going back of the circle to the front, or you can do a spin for the discus. And the way my ankle felt at the beginning of that week, I felt like I could not do any of them. So the reason why I think that story is, is, is most is memorable for me is because when we went to Emory Riddle and we... And we actually competed and I actually went there and coach was like, you know what, try your best. The athletic trainer at that time, she wrapped my ankle up and, you know, she did some real nursing on it the night before when we got in and coach really focused on, he said, you know what, if you can, if you feel like you really can't glide on it, do a pushback or do a stand, but give it all you could. And that is memorable because for me in my life now, if life isn't going my way, if I feel like I am down, I can't do something, all I could remember is the words of my coach was just give it your best you got, even though you're wrapped up, even though you're in pain, even though that, you know, you don't think you can do it. Other person saw that you can. And, you know, that's what Coach Cooper and, and Kimberly Rose saw within me that for that particular me, you were still going, even though I doubted myself and doubted what I could. And, you know, I came up on, I came up honestly on top, on top for, for that meet. So 
That was one of hold my on, memorable hold on, hold on, lapses hold on. because you it's... tell me just now. Let me clean the ears out. You telling me <laughs> that you had no intentions to go. The great leadership, the the the, the great Sora, as somebody said, said to you, "Oh, that's good that you thought that, but you're not going to do that. This is what you're going to do. You travel. Correct. Smooth. They wrap you up." Then they encourage you and say, do your best. And you not only did your best, but you meddled. How dare yep. you deny how great my Jesus is. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at my teammate, Delron. And he actually mentioned another memory of mine. Oh, the University of, of Miami. Oh, boy. That was a tremendous. Like, look at Kyle. Yeah, that was actually a great memorable experience, too, when I broke my PR. Uh, you know, uh <laughs> When when I when we traveled to University of of Miami and the feeling of breaking your personal record, I think I was at forty one meters in the discus at that point. And before I traveled to that particular meet, and it was a time during the season where I knew I could be better and do better. And I went into the ring. We had about 17 or so competitors, but my focus wasn't even winning that day. It was just beating my best. And I came out with a public, with a um, personal best of about 44 meters. And that also stands out because I came out of the ring crying like tears, literal tears. And I think that was the first time I actually met uh, Candice Ellen. She, that was the first trip she went on with us with, the track and field team and she just could not figure out what was going on with me but it, and all of my team was just like what is going on but the feeling of beating a personal record even though I didn't even make a medal stand versus the other story I just shared where I won that was a memorable moment for me because the focus wasn't winning it was just winning within myself but you still medal. No, not at that one. I just beat. I just beat. I I, I beat my personal I record. Used, yeah, not at getting, that week. I was getting used to every story, and then with I still matter. <laughs> Majority, but not that one. <laughs> okay, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. We are at the question and answer period again. You can go back to the first interview. I think again, she left a lot of gold nuggets inside that interview. Um, this one is, of course, for you, for you to engage and ask the questions. Any old teammates they could ask. I saw um, Ashley. Ashley was here. Ash attack. Look. Yeah, in the Ashley made it. Uh, we interviewed her when she graduated. Yeah, she was here. So when she graduated, I didn't even know she she switched majors. So that like extended yeah. her time at, at UB. I didn't even know she was still there. I was like, I remember you when I was there. So I was like, you're probably gone. And it turns out, no, she was right there. So definitely want to interview her. Um, you only did track. I thought you did softball as well. Uh, soccer so I also did yeah I was soccer. a goalie yeah I did soccer so I was goalie and I maybe I did I gotta stop Miss Eldon Miss Eldon just locked in Miss Eldon just locked in oh wow oh no name. precious huh? you are for her. I wanted to hear it <laughs> let Miss Eldon know what you gotta say go this audience we coming back to soccer I don't know would you mean my story I just shared you were saying all this good stuff about Miss Eldon now Miss Eldon here go girl Give me a raise. Go, just go, go crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I it, it just has to come naturally. <laughs> but um, no, hey, but she I'm definitely. Power of Since you want to be hey, some hey, more, hey, hey. um, we got a a great thank you, Miss Eldon. She mentioned how you traveled with the team. You were motivational. You helped her. You took on oh, the yeah. wing. She talked about the time and she's crying for nothing. And you know, use my boss, lady. <laughs> Y'all two belong together. Because boss lady, you used to do that to me. So now you just look at you. Miss Ellen, why are you crying? Man, I'm just so happy. Ken broke a record. I'm like, oh. now I understand. It came from you. Julie, she learned unnecessary crying from you. You passed it on. <laughs> um, so <laughs> shout outs to um, my, my boss lady, Miss Ellen, uh, great leader. Um, she allows me to do and be myself. Uh, this is one of the greatest jobs I've ever worked, you know, at the university. Uh, I literally don't understand why they pay me to be myself. It's crazy. But uh, let's get back to nice. soccer. So you're talking about your time on the soccer team. And this is goal again because many people have never met one of our former female soccer players. So please elaborate on that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, so I came in for high school. I did track and I, 
I started basketball. I didn't like suicides. And I also went into soccer because I, you know, I love team sports as well, which is very important. And, you know, for me, it was a, a Sorry, am I back? I rebuke it. I, I was rebuking. Can you hear me? Oh. Just now. I could hear you. I told the devil. Well, I can't hear you. You can't hear me? I could hear you. You can't hear me. Oh. Please hear me. Bring me back. <laughs> okay, you there you are. I can hear you now. I'll take out my earpiece. Okay, great. Yeah. What was the question? Where, where was I? So, so you were elaborating. Well, you yeah. blew my mind again. You were a part of the basketball team as well? Not for COB, just for high school. So I started okay. basketball in high school. I recognized that the suicides was not for me. So I I decided that I, I could shoot, but I, I'm not a runner. So I stopped. And, <laughs> and then That's I went right. to soccer. And, you know, I had the strength on me to be a defense and to be a goalie. And I did my job with that and then transitioning into University of Bahamas, still getting used to that. University of Bahamas, I think the, oh my goodness, what is coach, what is the soccer coach name? It leaves me right now. But anyway, they had a, they had a few games where they needed, you know, a goalie for, and they found out somehow that I did soccer, but that also was short-lived at COB because I needed to make sure that I was okay to compete for the reason I was actually getting paid for, which was throwing. So I assisted where I can on the soccer team, which is amazing as well. And a lot of great soccer players, they were there. And one of the, uh, one of them, a male soccer player, you know, Audison, he, he will always stick out in my mind because we graduated the same year. And he was, he was a tremendous male soccer player. I will always rave about him as well. But, you know, that was my experience on that team. Fair. I want to always, I need to clip that out and put that on the page. You be female soccer did exist. Because yeah. I, I'm tired of telling students, um, yep. I think it's a generational thing, but I told a lot of students who I have a chance to mentor, even me, like a key thing to being successful in this day and age is to do what college is teaching you, research before you speak. And it hurts me sometimes. Some people come so heavy and strong to the school. Mm -hmm. And be like, come on, why we don't have a female team? And she's giving me that look like, if they only did their research, you know? Yeah. So that's the, all the historians who carry the mantle in these historical pieces for the university. Wait, so you're saying uh, that there's not a soccer team now? There is no female soccer team or female basketball team. And I think <gasps> it, it, it's not even our fault. Because what? I'm Gabby for the basketball team? Oh, my gosh. That it was such great basketball play. Oh my goodness! Anyway, go ahead, Ren. Yeah, the, the um, female and well, the women are female end of it. I think it doesn't have primarily everything to do with the university <laughs> that is ours. I think it comes back to this is my opinion, um, mm -hmm. of, of course, because the athletic director Kimberly Rose, she would have final say. But I feel like it's literally because athletics, as you mentioned, isn't supported holistically in this country. So as you would have young men, as they graduate going to night league, you don't see that kind of same excitement that females wanting to go to. I would be wow. Like, you know, um, even Jeez. the realities abroad, NBA making millions, Miss um, Miss Jones, of course, from Grand Bahama, she had to make a decision to switch countries just so she could get and rake in a little bit more um, money. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it isn't fair. Um, I know a lot of talented athletes. Shout out to even Eureka Woodside. She's on our volleyball team. The girl could play ball. Like, I wish she yeah. had a basketball team. Same thing for Shantisa Cooper. She is going into field. So when she watches this, I hope she goes and find you and Sasha to really get some good training. Um, yeah. Even though, I mean, I would recommend you over Sasha. Just because it's Sasha, you know. But then Sasha went to sock. What are you talking about? I have to go with but Sasha. Sasha's Sorry. a go-to, though. She, she's going. a really great thrower. She, she was... She, I I, I she told was you, I one that I looked up to. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Shane, I apologize. That's why Shane is telling me I this when it comes to soccer, you know. I slipped some down, Shane. Sorry for that. No, Sasha all the way. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, 
if SAC ever break up, that's it, you know, the whole Nassau. Yeah. Warren about COVID. No, if the SAC alliance ever stop, this whole place. Yeah, that's a problem. They don't go around <laughs> believing in comments. Anyway, that's a little commercial break. Um, so we're waiting on questions for you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is the time again. We give about two. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. We give about two <laughs> minutes for any questions you may have. Uh, you can leave it in the question section or in the comments. That's why you kind of see us just filling in with, with a little bit of babble. But um, as you come up with questions, we'll take them. I want to I want to ask you, what would you say is was your number one failure? I want to be, you know, that resume person, that resume interview person. Can you mm-hmm. talk about a challenge or a time you felt that sad to say you failed as an athlete and probably talk about overcoming it if you did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so for me, failure was always doubting myself, right? I, I mean, I, I'm quick to open my mouth and speak confidently, but deep down inside, a lot of times I had doubts. And like I said, I was a small thrower. My stature was not as big as the other throwers. But the way I overcame that was making sure I had team teammates around me that were always encouraging. Coach Cooper, always encouraging. Made me on the rough side, but also encouraging Kimberly Rule. You know, she she spoke with she spoke to me with a with a voice of sternness, but also much of love, right? With all due respect, and, as long as this is my show, we do not talk positive about Ms. Rule. That's just <laughs> something. That's a continuous gag on every show. Any of that fluffing her up, not on the show. Oh today. yeah, no, she's rough. She she was she she definitely can put it on you for sure. Um, but no, talk I talk about her negatively. I, yeah, and you know, and especially I would say, you know, Kendi Eldon in terms of being exposed to her. But my self doubt was I, I would I would even call it a failure because that was something I struggled with internally. That was something that I knew every time I went in the gym, I wanted to better my weights, I wanted to better my distance. But there was always something gnawing at me to say, Julie, you can't do this. But every time I went to practice and I actually put on my zone mindset because, you know, you talk, Beyonce talks about, you know, her alter ego. And I had to really find that person for me to say, you know what? What's your name? I don't, I don't have a name, but I just wanted to reference it. I don't have, I don't have a name for it. No, no, I don't, I don't have a name for it, but, you know, I, I had to step in. You. When you stepped there in your zone, you looked at the short one, Pedro. <laughs> Pedro, oh, I, I like how you snort this now, Ren. That's pretty. Make sure you get that on tape too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think for me that was always something that I struggled with daily. But I had to remember that persons persons believed in me around me, and that would that's really what helped me move through. You know. So that that's it. You know, my self doubt was a big failure for me, but it, I the reason the way I overcame it was, was with the help of those around. Somebody saying, "Remember when you thought you couldn't bench two plates?" At oh yeah, and you did. Let's hear yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, for Coach Cooper, his his program was really heavy. Like you know. I mean, I don't know if any if you if anybody knows about gym weights, but when we talk about plates, we're talking about forty five plates and two plates on each side. So Delron might be typing two plates, but it's two plates on each side. So two forty five, whoever the mathematicians are in the room, two forty fives on one side. One eighty, one eighty plus the, the bar is forty five by itself, right? The bar is forty five. So, so you're looking at over, so, you're two, so at least two oh, over two twenty five. We have to have a moment. Sasha, you saw good I was with plates. You thought I wasn't in the gym, Sasha. The reason why I could do that up here, and I know the bar, and come on, man. Anyway, Julie, continue. Before I start yeah, I don't even know where I was going with that, but yeah, and <laughs> 275. Thanks, Kyle. You're on it. Um, yeah, 275. So so that was something where even as you, even as I, you know, went under certain weights, and I knew I needed to grow in terms of better weights or heavier weights, it was a focus of, can I really do it? And, you know, my teammates are on the line now. And 
it's a it's a matter of making sure you have a good supporter and persons in the gym, you know. And normally, sometimes the gym is cleared out for us, especially if it's a if it's an early morning or a day where persons aren't on campus. We got we got it's loud and Which gym? Are you talking about the one above the sun? Yeah. Or, oh, the old gym. No, 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 the new gym by the court. My basketball okay. court. No, I just I just wanted to get my mind framed up. Yeah, oh no, that gym had some old heavyweights in there. Like I anyway, that's a different level of me being scared going in there from, from high school. But they had some some really heavyweights in there too. But yeah, I mean two seventy five and you know, that's on bench press and you know, other other equipments like deadlifts too. You know, was a was a doubt for me because we did a lot of deadlifts and heavy at that. So and squatting is was important for us and and leg press where we had you know where we had the had, had at least six plates on each side. You know, I remember those days. So I had the nine plates on each side at one point. Um, but squats, looking at three plates on each side. Uh, yeah. So 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 it's crazy. We have a next question. What are the three attributes athletes have which make them excellent leaders? Great, great question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think three attributes would be one, discipline, and two, drive, and three, just hunger. I would put it for those three. And the reason why I say discipline, drive, and, and hunger is that in order for an athlete to be focused on bettering themselves they have to figure out their routine you know if you're going if you're lifting five pounds one day you know you need to be up to 10 pounds or whatever you're whatever you're doing if you want that if you want your focus to be better you want to be able to focus on aspects of discipline that's how you get better that's how you know where your weaknesses are not even just weaknesses but where you start off at and then Secondly, you talk about your drive. Your drive has to be important to you. You know, not everybody will desire the same thing as you, but figure out your why, why you're doing this particular sport or why you're going, why you're doing this particular career or this particular, you know, um, studies. And with that, I think that's what sets, uh, you know, sets the focus for an athlete or, you know, to becoming a great leader or even just a great athlete or a great student or in society. How, uh, next question, how has your training mentality helped you transition to, I want to add something to it, transition to the mm -hmm. real world and the financial world? The real world and the financial world? Oh, just going in the focused focus zone, knowing that I have something to offer and figuring out how, and also very funny, two of my teammates were also two of my employees, were, were fellow employees, so this is a true story. Being able to know your worth and knowing when you should leave if your worth is not given to you and finding oh. out the next place to get your worth. I'm just going to leave it like that. <laughs> So I'm just going to leave I it like that. Rubbing my knee. I know when it raining outside. I was like, that one. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it like that right now because the mentality when you know you are capable of doing something physically or academically and translating that into the work world now, you begin to sit differently. You begin to strategize. You begin to think on a different level to say, hey, I know what it is to look at the qualifying marks for a Rifta team, for a youth, for world youth team, where I mentioned where I went to Estrava in my first, in 2007, with the, with the Cayman Islands trip. And you really begin to say, well, if I looked at the qualifying mark when I was in grade 11 and I needed to throw 10 meters or 38 meters in discus, what's, and I, and I didn't have to pay bills back then, it recharges, recharges your mentality to say, I'm now an adult. I now have things to take care of, things to pay for, bills, a car to maintain, a home to maintain. Why should I be sitting on someone's job 
that's not giving me my personal qualifying pay Whoa. or my qual my 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 personal qualifying and uh what you call it benefits or something like that you know so that's that's just what it is for me and then you got just got to go and search the market for something else that's real right there. Ladies and gentlemen, proud graduate of the College of the Bahamas, now University of the Bahamas. Um, she still is in training. She hasn't been saying go mangoes after the real nuggets, but we could train her. Um, but I want to, just in respect of time, I don't see any more questions. I don't think I missed any. So I want to just ask any final words of wisdom or any final thing you want to say before we put an end to the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, my final words of wisdom, especially for any students, any, you know, athletes that are, are on the line or that may actually see it, or any person, anybody in general, is to just stay the course, you know, stay committed to your, to your small wins, whether it's in track and field, whether it's in the classroom or on your job, you know, find out what you are doing now that is well, what you're doing that focuses on bettering you and also remembering that life isn't going to be easy all the time you are going to have situations that's going to press you you are you going to go through times that's going to be uh, a struggle for you but stay the course you know it, you, you're going to have losses in life and and for me I can tell you after I graduated from 2013 a lot has happened you know I, I was able to have you know, transition into the work world for five years at a job. And during that time, I lost my mother. I also knew that within me, I needed to find a new job. And, you know, joining Toastmasters, uh, it's so much things that you have to know that within yourself, you always have to say the course. You always have to. So that's my final words of encouragement. Supposed to say something afterwards. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm supposed to say something. Go, go something. Oh, go mingos. <laughs> there we are, ladies and gentlemen. That's our show for the day. It's my pleasure. My name is Ren. I was your host, brought to you from the University of the Bahamas Athletics and, of course, University of the Bahamas Office of University Relations. Miss Clark, a proud alumna of the institution, I thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on your success in marriage, in your career. And of course, in being the district representative, um, representative sorry, for District F of your Toastmasters. You're doing tremendous things. Uh, the university is proud of you. Miss Eldon, of course, logged in. She's proud of you. She's saying go mingos. That's why you got to say it, girl. Oh, got to say it. But it's my pleasure again. My name is Ren. And I want to encourage all of you. You can go on the timeline. You can listen to this. You can pick out of it. This is a lot of gold that she gave here. And you can tune in at a later time to hear more from Ms. Clark on 10th year seniors as we take her to the world and abroad. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks. All right. All right. See you later.